I was over at my dad's house, and my dad's a Vietnam veteran. He's a hundred percent disabled from serving our country. My dad's just, my dad's just a great guy, and he, my dad is folding his whitey tidies, okay, <laughs> his whitey tidy underwear, and he, he's folding them, and I see him look at the tag, and he holds the tag up, you know, but he kind of holds it far away from his face, like old men do, because they can't read when it's close. <laughs> and he looks at the tag and he said, he said, I'll, I'll be dad gum. That's my dad. That's how my dad says, wow. He said, I'll be dad gum. And I said, what? He goes, my underwear are made in Vietnam. And he just started laughing. And I was like, I bet you didn't think that back in the 60s when you were in Vietnam, someday you'd be wearing made in Vietnam underwear. And he was like, nope. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. All right, buddy. Sorry, man. I'm on the road, so I guess it is what it is. Oh, you're, you're on the road right now. Yeah, we have a little, little, small little show. So, so you're in a tour bus, right? Now. Yeah, I'm sitting on the engine. This is awesome. <laughs> I love this. This is great. That's a nice tour bus, man. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yeah, we've I've had it a little while, so it's a good one. Yeah. I'll put my guitar. I can look at. Look, we'll make it look a little nicer. Look at this. Okay, there we go. There we go. Look. <laughs> There, there we go. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I love it, man. That looks great. Well, thanks so much, Aaron, for um, thanks for having me. No, thank you for for coming on. Um, you know, actually, I'm really curious about this this live show. You know, I had um another country musician on. Uh, his name is Kyle Park. I don't know if you're familiar with him. And um, we were a short little guy. He's a short little guy. The little, the little short fella. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't never met him in person, so I did it on Zoom. I, I don't, you know, he's sitting at a chair, so I, I don't know, honestly. Yeah, no, he's one of my good buddies. I love him. Hey, I was like, well, I don't know how to respond to that. Like, what do I say? <laughs> oh, sh yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, we were talking, you know, about playing live shows and basically how difficult that decision is right now, and how you know maybe you're getting some, you know pushback from from people that probably don't even know you right um, oh yeah you know listen and i you know, get it's, I, I get it like i understand the struggle and and yeah what needs to happen like i totally understand well you know there's one thing that i bet is worse than the corona than the, the coronavirus and that would be starvation starving to death <laughs> yeah. yeah you know it's one of those things where <clears throat> You know, I have stayed at home, and I, I don't know. I've probably canceled 80-plus shows, literally lost millions. And I'm not upset about it. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we're all in this together. Everyone is, is having to endure this pandemic. Um, so I'm in no way like, woe is me. Um and, and you know, for for three and a half months or more, I've just stayed home. And um, but also, I have a wife and three kids, and I'm not much into politics and stuff, you know. But I believe that people have the right to protest, right? Yeah, I believe it. This is America. It's America, and I believe they, without a doubt, whatever it is you want to protest, it doesn't matter. There was somebody protesting uh, at Chick-fil-A because they want them to use, like, artificial chicken or something. I don't know, but whatever you want to protest, it is your right as an American, and you have to respect that. That is America. And I also believe that if someone 
needs to work to take care of their family and protect their family, then they have that right as well. So I've caught a little bit of flack here and there, little comments here and there. But what I do is I encourage everybody because this is, you know, land of the free, that if you want to come to my show, I need you to be responsible. Please be responsible. Let's wear masks. Let's, you know, let's be smart. And it, it's just a difficult time. I mean, I don't even know what to believe, to be honest with you, on the news, whether it's the left-wing news or the right-wing news. I don't know what to believe. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, tuberculosis killed 1.5 million people last year. It never, I never saw that on the news. Yeah. And it's just, we're, we're living in such a weird time where who knows what to believe. And I, 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 a person that works for me has had two family members, um, die from the virus. Oh, so, I'm but, but it's heart, it's heartbreaking. Both of them, uh, one was battling cancer and the other was the, the granddad was in his mid eighties. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it's heartbreaking and you have to be, you have to be sympathetic to people who have been affected by it. I also have two buddies who've had it. Their entire families had it and they were like, man, I, I just, it was kind of like bad allergies. We just yeah. had bad allergies. Yeah. And so it's just a weird deal, but at some point, at some point you have to get back to living again. And, uh, you know, so it's a weird deal. I don't know. It, it's, I, I have mixed emotions on it. Like, you know, I, I've tried so hard not to expose myself to people and to be safe. Um, it's a weird time though. Right. I mean, hundred percent. It's like, well, I lost my home and I lost everything because, you know, I didn't want, I mean, it's just a weird deal. At some point, at some point, people are going to be like, sorry, but we have to work. And um, it's just a weird, it, man, it's just a weird, weird time. There was, there was a girl, a country artist, and she's, I don't know, 24, 25 years old. And she was running down another country artist because he played shows. And I was just like, she would not want to bark up this tree. Because <laughs> I'm not... I'm not a 24 year old, you know, it's like I'm, I'm 42 yeah. and I have, I have more important things to do, like raise my children than, you know, run people down on Twitter and Instagram. And, and, and actually she's a wonderful artist and I have no qualms with her. I mean, my daughter absolutely loves her. Um, but it's just one of those things you have to be, you, you can't, uh, you know, until you've walked around in someone's shoes, you don't know what they're going that they're going through. So that's I'm, I'm true. I'm just ready for this year to get over with. Actually, God, me too, man. Me too. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> me too. Yeah, it's a crazy time, man. I, I mean, I think you make a lot of great points. I I think you know the same thing I talk with with Kyle is that you you kind of just summed it up basically. You, you don't know what somebody else is going through, right? You don't you don't can't place no. yourself so it's hard to sit back from your home right the safety of your home and and get on the keyboard and start firing away all these opinions and thoughts at somebody who you have no idea what they're going through and and it's not just you right Aaron I mean this is what yeah. like it's not just you you're worried about right it's not just you going and playing these solo acoustic shows you've got a crew you've got bandmates you've got responsibility yeah. as a business owner not just as an artist and I told yeah that i've owned my business for years right so like i get yeah. I, I just get it i think until you've been in that position of leadership it's hard to understand it and i think that's where it's coming from right people just don't understand leadership sometimes they don't understand that you have to make difficult decisions you know in the face oh yeah you know and and, and i'm not a real political guy me neither, uh, me neither. But, I'll, but i'll tell you this you know it's like there have been presidents that i have not voted for but I rooted for them every single day they were in the office because I'm an American. Me too. I want my president. You know, 
succeed whether I agree with him or not. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. I'll tell you this. People, and, and they have the right, they have the right to have their opinions. But my opinion is this. People who don't support their president and they wish bad things upon their president, you know what? They're bad teammates. And I wouldn't want them on my team. It's like, we, let's talk football for a second. You're a diehard Dallas Cowboys fan or whatever. You, you get a coach you don't like. You've loved that team your whole life, but then they get a coach you don't like. Does that make you hate the team? No. You, you, you know what? If you're a diehard, you love your team through the thick and through the thin. You know what made the Cowboys, what made it so sweet in the 90s? What made the 90s so sweet is the 80s were so bad. Yeah. They were terrible. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I grew up hearing about how great the Cowboys used to be. Yeah. I'm like, well, used to be, Dad. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just one of those things like, uh, you know, I've had people talk about, I've heard a lot of comments about Governor Abbott. You want to know what? Uh, I absolutely love Governor Abbott as a human being and his wife, Cecilia. They are so, so kind to people. And people are mad because they have to wear a mask. Well, you want to know what? I, I don't necessarily think that a mask is, I took microbiology in college. I mean, I don't think that those small virus particles floating through the air are probably going to get stopped by my uh, 49 cent mask that I'm wearing. But you know what? If that makes people happy and if that, if people feel like that could help the situation, Man, I am going to just – I'm going to be a good team player. I'm going to wear that mask. I even got a mask with little bunny rabbits on the front of it. <laughs> You're that's all I – yeah, well, that's, that, that's all I had one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm wearing the bunny mask, the bunny rabbit mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Absolutely. but, you know, God – through all this craziness, man, uh, God has – has still blessed me with opportunities to be able to make a living. Um, whether it's the uh, Zoom concerts, or I do these personalized cameo videos. Uh, we do these online meet and greets called Looped. Um, oh, I, I have been, you, have you heard of that? You haven't heard, it's kind of new. It's, yeah. it's kind of a, tr it's fun, it's kind of a trip. But the craziest thing is I've been handwriting lyrics, my lyrics on Canvas. Love that. Awesome. And I've done I've done over four hundred of those in two months. Damn. Dude, and it's like it's I have gotta be honest with you. It's schoolwork. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like uh, I became a musician because I didn't want to do that kind of work. But <laughs> you know, you just gotta hustle and we all gotta stay positive and you know, uh we got to stay positive. Yeah. That it's sad. I, I hope some other country doesn't have to. Yeah. I, I hope it doesn't take some other country attacking us to unify us. A hundred percent. You know, we need to just kind of attacking us. That should unify us. Right. In a lot of ways. Like that's, that's the enemy. Yeah. You know, you, without a doubt, without a doubt. And you know, uh, I'm, if anything, I strongly feel like whatever we owe China, we shouldn't pay that country back a dime. <laughs> That's all I know. That's my thoughts. <laughs> I mean, I bought, I ordered some masks online because I was like, crud, we need some masks. Me they were freaking made in China. I know. Mine were too, man. <laughs> I was like, son of a gun. Same thing. I was looking on Amazon and all of them were made in China. So I was trying to oh. find something else so let me see what else i can find and actually one of them was made in wuhan no shit oh my, i mean what the heck the mask came from wuhan it had five star rating bro five star rating in the thousands like i don't think people realize that only a few comments had put that like i don't know read carefully guys it says made in wuhan china like <laughs> 
You know, I, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of um, I was over at my dad's house, and my dad's a Vietnam veteran. He's a hundred percent disabled from serving our country. My dad's just, my dad's just a great guy. Oh, and awesome. and I'm sitting, I'm sitting there with dad, and he's folding laundry, and he, my dad is folding his whitey tidies, okay, <laughs> his whitey tidy underwear, and he. He's folding them, and I see him look at the tag, and he holds the tag up, you know, but he kind of holds it far away from his face like old men do because they can't read when it's close. Yeah. And he looks at the tag, and he said, he said, I I'll be dad gum. That's what my dad says. I don't know what that means. That's like, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> that's my dad. That's how my dad says, wow. He said, I'll be dad gum. And I said, what? He goes, my underwear are made in Vietnam. And he just started laughing. <laughs> and I was like, I bet you didn't think that back in the 60s when you were in Vietnam, someday you'd be wearing made in Vietnam underwear. And he was like, nope. You know, I mean, How crazy is that? Well, Japan, right? We, we fought Japan in World War Germany, right? If you've ever gone back to Germany. Or oh, yeah. And it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Time changes things, right? It it is kind of crazy. Yeah, and uh, you know, I just hope that you know, it's one of those things that you hope that these people, right? That you, you no. that you be, right? I mean, that's like saying you would be mad at Americans for something the president did, right? And yeah, the, it's it's the it's the government. Yeah, the people are just like us, struggling to get by, right? Just trying to work, take care of their families. Just like every literally human on the planet, I, I feel. Oh, every they must be so much more oppressed than any, I mean. Uh, there's so much shit over there, it's horrible. I mean, I, you can't imagine, yeah. It, and that's, I've kind of explained that to my, my kids. Like, listen, it's not, it's not the people. I go, it's the corrupt government. Yeah. That that uh, and, and you know, and that's another thing too. It's just like I, I've got so many friends just bickering about politics, and I'm like, guys, you know, you, you I, they were going back and forth about Trump this, Trump that, and you know, and then and then I'm like, guys, you're comparing. Then you've got Biden. I mean, hello. If you if you can't if you can't look at if you look at Trump and see flaws, and then you look at Biden and not see flaws, then you know what you need. You got your you got your face mask over your eyes instead of your mouth. <laughs> I mean, you're blind. And if and if you can't go, I don't trust human beings when they get in power. I mean, and, and that's the thing. I, I, I will not get wrapped up in that stuff. I'm not going to get wrapped up in it. You know, my wife watches the news, and I'm like, I don't want to. And I, can, I barely can control the one thing I can control, and that's myself. <laughs> I'm a big enough mess that I need to focus on myself, trying to take care of my family, you know, try to raise good kids. I don't have time to, I'm telling you, I do not have time to, uh, you know, I'd rather go fishing. I would rather go fishing or do something that's just enjoyable than watch news that is just constantly, it's all bickering. Yeah. Yeah. It's all negative. Yeah. And, you know, when, when all the riots were happening, the protesting, did you notice that for like two or three weeks, none, no one even said anything about the virus? It was, if, it was as if it went away. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There was a kind of a dip in that um, coverage. You're right. They, they did. And, and which kind of shows you that we all kind of are manipulated by what they tell us. Sure. And so it's just one, man, just one of those things. I, I just, I try to just stay positive. I, I look at this time as a uh, involuntary vacation. No, no shit, right? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Like make the, you got to just make the most of it, you know, and uh, 100 uh, percent. It, it, look, it's not for anybody. Um, You know, it's funny. You know I'll talk to people, Aaron, and and, uh, you know, friends of mine or whatever. Just, uh, hey, sh shooting the shit. Right. How's it going? How are yeah. you? How's your family going? And people are scared to tell me that they're doing well, actually, during this time, right? Like, that, yeah. one, one buddy is like, I'm thriving right now, actually. My business, oh, yeah. the root, right? I'm getting all these contracts for video work and all this stuff, and my wife's doing great. And he's like, man, I'm looking around. I, you know, the world's on fire, but like, my family is doing wonderful right now. Yeah guilty in some ways right and other people you'll talk to they're not doing well you know they're they're, yeah. uh, they're no child care uh, my brother for instance he's single dad having to take care of his two boys all alone at his house while he works from home and homeschool oh. i and oh, my word i mean it's a nightmare man he's he's but my brother is is a badass my brother yeah. is a badass so he can do it you know he handles yeah. but is it easy for him no not at all no. but he but does he's gonna do he, he's he, got to needs to do yeah he's got to do what he's got to do yeah take care of his family 100 percent um you, you know it's it's just who you talk to weird. you know you're gonna get a different answer but but generally most people are not having a good time through this right i mean yeah you know i think more than anything too i think it has disrupted our peace of mind yeah yeah you know and i think that's one thing we take it we've taken for granted in this country. What this country provides us is with a we have that peace of mind. Yeah. And 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 what we're all dealing with right now is something that's out of our hands. And um you know, it's a very helpless feeling. Uh totally. Yeah. You know, I, I mean when you're at the store and you're just staring at people with masks on it's like you're in a movie oh it feels so surreal so yeah i mean it feels apocalyptic right i mean it just feels it, it does you're like is this really totally really I, happening yeah. and i'm telling you if all this just goes away after the election i'm gonna be pissed oh it won't it, it won't man i mean honestly man to be honest with you i've had i mean i want it to i want it to go away but i've actually had a couple scientists on the podcast um yeah you know the virus and how it's going and blah 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 and look oh. this i mean a vaccine is not coming till early next year that's yeah. the, that's the truth coming i mean i literally spoke to a scientist who their company is helping work on the vaccine on one vaccine. one of the many vaccines that are being created so there's multiple vaccines and multiple treatments for symptoms that they're working on as well so they're going to try to attack this from many different angle yeah. oh uh, but uh, it's gonna take a while man i don't think it's a political thing um no I, no i don't think so either i mean i wish that that was the case that way it, it could just poof away yeah it would be nice if it did just go away uh yeah, nice but it's not it's no. i hate that people make it political i hate that it's 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 a disease it's life and death and yeah. ask has nothing to do with if you're liberal or conservative uh, you know just be safe yeah. like there if we if we all weren't idiots and we're just a little safe and and we could get over this a lot quicker if we stop yeah other that that's i always hate when i see working class people arguing with each other against yes. or the man it's like whoa guys we're on the same team you and i both work our ass Amen. we have and it's these people above us that are just like laughing that we're fighting each other right like oh, yeah i hate it just it breaks my heart man Breaks. But, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like, it's, it's sad because, you know, I have, I don't personally know, I, 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 I don't, I don't know the president. I don't, I don't know. I don't know Trump. I didn't know Obama. Yeah. And you know what? You, you, you might like or hate one, or not, or Hate, I shouldn't say hate. You hear a lot of people saying hate. Boy, that's a strong word. You're right. You may not dislike, you may dislike someone, but if you met him, you might go, you know what? He's not so bad. And, and, and the thing is, our country, I don't even know what our country wants anymore. Like, I think they, we want somebody who is 
really, really good looking and strong, <laughs> well spoken. Yeah. Almost like a king. Gets along well with celebrities. You know, I mean, it's like we, we, the, the working class, and that's you and me. Yeah. You know, it's like, don't listen. Don't let some celebrity that gets paid $50 million a film tell you how you should be spending your money. Oh, uh, like, honey. you know, it's, it, it's, but we get, we get, we fall into that. Sure. We, we fall into that thing. And, you know, we just need to like, Whoever gets elected, I'm still an American, and I'm still rooting for my country. Yeah. Oh. And and you know, it, 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 you think about this: if instead of posting negative comments, what if you what if you posted something positive? Exactly. I, I mean, it could do. You know, I'll post something on on uh, Instagram and there'll be some jack wagon start giving me his opinions. Jack wagon. I never heard that. I love that. <laughs> you know, and I'm kind of like, what, like how much time do you have? That's it. You're right. The time. I, I, I posted a picture of my, my kid, my oldest boy. We're at the golf course and I posted a, I posted a, a video of him swinging. He's a he's a baseball player, but he's a good little golfer. Yeah. And the guy's like, uh, "Yeah, you need a, the the angle up at the top of his swing is all wrong. He needs to push his hands forward." Blah 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 blah. And I just was like, you know, and that's the thing. We live in a day and age where people just feel like people care about their opinions. Yeah, oh, that's a that's a great point right there. That we care about your opinion exactly, <laughs> and I don't. It's like <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah, it's like I don't. If you look at things that I post, there are times that I feel passionate about giving society my rebuttal. Sure, but then I stop because guess what? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Like, honestly, who cares about what I think about the economy? And I, am I an economist? Is that even a word, economist? It is. It is. It, I'm not an economist. Yeah. You know, it's like, if I'm going to give you my opinion, I'm going to give you my opinion on things that I know about that involve me or my family or like, hey, I like this kind of seasoning when I'm cooking pork chops. Yeah. Those are the kind of things people need to hear about. Not <laughs> and, and that's the thing, man. I I don't even like Democrat, Republican, Republicrat, whatever. What <laughs> I, whatever you are. Tough. Uh, you're right. All I know is I just love being from Texas, you know? Me fucking too. You know, and that's what I can say is, God bless Texas. And <laughs> absolutely, you know, it's funny. Like when I travel, you know, I, I lived in Europe, for instance, for a few years. I lived in Mexico yeah. for a few years. Um, I always would tell people I'm Texan. I never said yeah. I'm American. I mean, I oh yeah, Texas thing, right? Like you say that first. I love, of course, I love America, right? Of course. But let me tell you something about this great state. I love this state. It, it makes you beat your chest. It's awesome. I love being from Texas. I love saying that I'm from Texas. I love the people in this great state. And yeah, I think Texas is a good example of that the rest of our country could learn from, which is people from both sides of the aisle getting along. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you live in Texas, you're going to have conservative and liberal friends. It's just part of yeah. living in Texas. You're going to get a little bit of everything. You can't escape it. You're not going to get all liberal and you're and you're not going to get all conservative. Yeah. I like exactly. I like that about Texas. I I, I like the, the there's I like the tolerance. Yeah. There's better tolerance. You know, it's like uh I remember growing up uh going to my grandmother's house and half my family was was Democrats, 
and they were Baptist. And the other half of my family was Republicans, and they went to the Church of Christ. Oh. And, you know, we would sit down at the table, and there was chirping, but no <laughs> one was ever mad at each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and really, man, that's really what it should be. I mean, it, we were talking They're football gone, earlier. Right? Yeah, those days are gone. We were talking football earlier. I took my dad to a Cowboys game. It was the, it was the, we've gone to several, but it was the first game they had in their new stadium several years back. Oh, oh, nice. And they lost to the Giants by a field goal in the closing seconds of the fourth quarter. Like as the clock was running out, they kicked the field goal to beat the Cowboys. And man, all the fans were just heartbroken and this and that. And as I've, as I'm walking my dad back to the, as we're walking back to the car, you know, we've got like a, a 10 mile hike to get back to the car. I was like, man, dad, that just stinks, man. Oh, it makes me sick. And my dad goes, well, don't feel too sick about it. Cause after the game, did you notice all the Cowboys were going down there and giving hugs to the giants? And he goes, and not, and then he goes, not to mention, don't feel bad because they're all getting in their $100,000 cars right now and driving to their million-dollar homes. And Dad goes, feel bad for us. We're the ones having to walk 10 miles back to the car in this heat. <laughs> and, you know, it's like be invested. Be invested in things that you can be a part of, that you can change. Yeah. Like your neighborhood, your house. I mean – you know, I can't, I can't change what's going on in Washington, D.C. I can't change what's going on in Austin. But you know what I can do? I can do good deeds around my neighborhood. Yep. You know, and that's, if, if we all did that, that that's, that, that's what's going to cure the world. A hundred percent, man. It's just your little circle, right, of what, what's around you, your little world, and the, the changes you can make in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's just, you know, those circles start to overlap when everybody's doing it, you know, and but it's man, it's some it's some crazy times. I mean, it's I, there there needs to be a movie someday called The Longest Summer Ever. <laughs> totally. The oh, I'll tell you this. Well, my, so my wife, my wife came to me and she said, "Hey, our school district has two options." Um Either the kids can go back end of August, uh, mandatory mask, blah, 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 or we can keep them out for the first six to eight weeks yeah. and stay home and do homeschooling. And I was like, there's no way we're doing homeschooling again. <laughs> I go, you send them back. Yep. I go, send them back to school. Yeah. I mean, here's, you know, I've also heard different doctors say that over the next X amount of years that like 80 to 90 percent of the population will eventually have this, have gotten it. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's true. I, you know, so it's one of those deals that I'm just like, you know what? I cannot handle doing the homeschool. I don't know how your brother's doing it. I don't either, man. He's again. He's a badass. I don't know how. Yeah. We're, honestly, I don't know how we're related. I'm not. Cheers, a, cheers to your brother, man. Cheers to, cheers to my brother, bro. Absolutely. Cheers to my brother. He, he's amazing. Um, yeah, but I think he's like you. Wants him to go back to school. You know. Yeah. Get back there. Well, you know, you got it. You got it. You got to get back at it. I mean, you know. We're all gonna go. Uh, I think that's part of the stir crazy, right? Of just. Oh yeah. Um, I think what it is is, you know, when people are left alone with their own thoughts for a long time, it's not good. It's just not good. You, your mind oh. to think about things over and over and over, and you start over. yeah things apart. Now you're watching the news like crazy, right? Because you have nothing else to do. You can't go anywhere. You're stuck at home. Maybe. Oh. Uh, whatever the case may be, you're just absorbing all this information. And like you said, the news is. Oh, yeah. 
you're supposed to know how to discern through. It's very difficult. It is very, very difficult um, to do that. Uh, and it's annoying, to be honest with well, you. Well, you know, it it's oh it's so annoying you know when i was in uh when i was in europe uh when i was in london the last time last it was last fall it, it was when trump signed that deal with north korea you know and remember what what month was it i, I was actually there too um maybe September. i can't remember it was I, well it was whenever whenever trump did that deal with that yeah. deal with north korea yeah, I, I do know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't uh, think that was done before I went. I went first week of November. Yeah, maybe it was, I was more September, October. But I was there and I was watching the BBC. And the reporter for BBC said, you know, he was so honest. He said, I'm not a, a big fan of President Trump. But what he did today was a victory, not just for him or America, but a victory for the entire world. Nice. And I could I could respect that because that person was honest and gave do, do, gave credit where credit was due. Exactly. And, and and that's the problem is that when you have when someone good when someone does something good but you're so anti that person you, you, for me you've just lost you've lost my attention. Yeah. I, I know it. You, you can't. You, you can't just. You have to see the whole playing field. You know, you got to go. You know, it's like being. It's called being a good sport. You like, gotta be honest, right? I mean, you, you gotta be honest. honest. And you may not like. Like, if, if I'm playing ball, there may be a guy on that team I don't like him, but when he makes a great play, I'm gonna tip my hat. Yeah. Well done. Yep. And and that's that's called just that's called good sportsmanship and that's called common sense. I agree. I mean and, and, and we just need to we just need to kind of go, man, everybody is going through some crazy stuff right now. I think you're right. Being stuck at home being stuck at home, it's called cabin fever. Cab and for people who've lost their jobs, they're angry. Yeah. And and you know, it's the same reason why you know, my dad growing up, he was like, listen, if you're not playing sports, you're going to have a job because if you're just sitting around here, you're going to get into nothing but trouble. Exactly. Yes. That's all we were told. Right. If you're sitting around with nothing, yeah. you're going to get in trouble. Oh, golly. And I mean, it's 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 like me now. I can I can sure enough find some trouble. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's something, you know, it's not my fault. It's born. Exactly. It's <laughs> It's not my fault. You know, it's. <laughs> it's <laughs> You're right. It's not. It's uh, look, that's everybody going through this. It's tough. Um, you know, my wife and I, I'm constantly having to, you know, reengage myself uh, a lot. Just like, am I doing the right thing? Do I need to be doing something? Yeah. So I hate that feeling. I'm more of a, you yeah. know, just what's, you know, go getter, right? Just looking forward. Yeah. What, pushing forward hustling just just like yourself yeah. so you know so not being able to do that and not being able to plan and not it's knowing tough. i'd say i hate it i absolutely despise it it's killing me uh, it's it's t it, yeah it's tough to not be able to well it's like this i'm headed to a show right now yeah. and it's it's a little restaurant thing and they have everybody separated at tables but I'm just expecting at any point for them to call us and go, hey, turn the bus around. It's being canceled. And it could. And that's still I hate to say that, but that's probably still a possibility. It's, it's sucking. That is, right. I it mean, it is. Absolutely. And, you know, but we've been able to do other things. You know, I've done some things like I've played some birthday parties. You know, I've done some little private shows where, you know, I, I could look at it as going, gosh, that's the that's the smallest amount I've ever been paid for a show. Or I could go, wow, that's gonna help me pay the mortgage this month. Exactly. So, man, my dad, my dad, I was telling you about my dad. My dad's a my dad's a Vietnam veteran, and he was a custodian. 
and he, he cleaned a bunch of buildings and he cleaned our church. And one time I was probably, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old. One summer I was, I, I helped dad every day. And it, it, in, in our members, I got older, I was annoyed with him. I was upset that he go swimming with my buddies. It didn't help that the big swimming pool was literally right across the street from the church we were cleaning, okay? So we're in the bathroom stalls. I'm in one stall, and I've got on the big yellow gloves, and I'm scrubbing this toilet. Dad's in the stall next to me, and he's scrubbing. And uh, I'm just complaining, man. I'm just bickering about this. I want to go hang out with my friends. I hate cleaning toilets. This stinks. It's not fair. It's not fair. Wah, wah, wah. I'll never forget my dad. He, he was on his knees. He leaned, he leaned over and stuck his head around the stall of the commode I was cleaning. And he said, hey. He goes, do you think when I was your age that I wanted to grow up to clean toilets? And I'm telling you, I just got quiet. That, that statement right there hit me in the heart. He said, this was not what I envisioned myself doing. He said, but you know, I got drafted. I went to war. I got hurt. He said, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm still alive. And he said, you want to know what? He said, I'm thankful for this job. He said, because of this job, he said, I'm able to take care of my family. He said, because of this job, I bought you that new baseball glove last week. And he said, and what I'm going to do, he said, I'm going to show God how grateful I am for this job. And I'm going to make sure these are the cleanest toilets in town. And it really forever changed me. Wow. It, it, for, it forever changed me. And it's a, uh, there's a Martin Luther King Jr. quote about a street sweeper. And I can't quote it word for word, but when I read it, I thought about my dad because the quote is something like Martin Luther King Jr. says to the sweet, to, to the street sweeper, make those streets so clean that if Jesus walks down those streets, he would look down and go, wow, these streets had a mighty fine street sweeper. Like just put your, do, do good, do good. And, and man, that's just, those are kind of the things that I've just applied to myself. You know, if, if, if to being a dad, you know, I got too rough on my boys a while back, you know, I was too hard on them. I was just chewing them up, spitting them out. And I, I, I went back in the house, they were doing some work outside and I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? I was too short with them. And I went outside and I said, y'all come here. And I wrapped my arms around them, and I was like, listen, you know, I was wrong. I was too hard on you. I'm sorry. I love you, boys. I hugged on them. I kissed on them. And, and you just have to be, you know, you just have to be sympathetic to others, you know, and, and, and just keep after it. And that's what I've been telling people during this pandemic, you know, let's just keep moving forward, and, uh, and we'll plow through this one way or the other. Yeah, man. Wow, what a touching uh... – touching story man I, I think that's a good Thanks, buddy i think it's a good quality to have man I, I i feel like my parents pretty much showed me the same thing you know my mom grew yeah. up cleaning houses uh yep. for you know rich people and um never once was there any sort of discussion of oh my gosh what do you do this is horrible you know yeah and i remember my mom basically doing the same thing taking me to go help clean and me bitching about why don't yeah. Why am I here, Mom? I, I have, I'm supposed to be playing, you know, basketball with my friends or whatever. Same sort of thing. My yeah, yeah. Almost telling me the exact same thing. Like, look, because yeah. I have this, and you know, my mom came from Mexico, and she came, um, you know, it was rough for her when she came up, and she yeah. had in this country at the beginning. She didn't know the language. Um, yeah. Luckily, she met my father. Um, who was American. He was from St. Louis. And, you know, my dad didn't know any Spanish. He just knew that he, you know, loved this woman and they got yeah. to just a few months. And I'm, 
I'm thankful for that, but they struggled a lot. You know, yeah. it's honestly, man, if that stuff doesn't get handed down to you, it's hard to yeah. look. I'm grateful for yeah. my, like every day, man, the things that they taught. Yeah. And I feel sorry for other people who didn't get those lessons. Yeah, I do too, man. It's like, how do they get those lessons then? You know, how yeah. broken people in this world because they just never got some of these same lessons that, that you and yeah. I, um, it's sad. It, it's absolutely it, sad. It's truly sad, you know, and it's like, I, I, I try to, I try to instill those things in my kids, you know, oh. my, my daughter's now, my, now my little girl, she's 10, you know, she's a, she's a different, she's 10, but she acts like she's 30. <laughs> so that I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how to deal with that. The boys, you know, the boys I, I, I get because, you know, boys are so simple. Yeah, they really Little are. girls are a far superior species. They are. Every, everybody says that everybody talks about equality or there's none. There's none. Boys are down at the bottom of the totem pole. Girls are a superior species. Yeah. Without a doubt. I can ask my boys, like, how was school today? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you learn today? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I go, you don't know anything you learned today? And they just shrug. It's like talking to a... Uh, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's somewhere between dealing with a, a monkey and a, and a, a, a lab puppy. <laughs> and I can ask my daughter, how was school today? And she'll go, oh, my goodness, today was amazing. So in my first class, Mrs. So-and-so, she came in and she had this presentation, and it was so good. And she will go on and on. And, and, and honestly, then I'm wishing I hadn't asked because, you know, 30, you know, 45 minutes into the conversation, she's just into her third period of class. I'm like, oh, and then she'll talk about lunch. Oh, shit. Like, uh, oh, she's like, I'm never eating lunch at the school again. That food, I'm telling you, I, I, it's... It, it just blows my mind. They become like little adults, um, women. Oh. Yeah, girls. They just, they age quicker, I think, and they're just more mature. Oh, yeah. Better conversations. I, I mean, I 100%. They're, they're smarter. I think women oh. are just smarter than us. I mean. <laughs> they, yeah. I, if, you know, if my wife and I are having an argument, I'll be like, who's faster? I can outrun you and I can do more pull-ups than you. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. You want to have a foot race? That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I can bring to the table. Like, I can do more pull-ups than you. I can do more push-ups than you. Yeah. And that is literally – and you know what? That just shows you all I am is just cheap labor for her. <laughs> I'm cheap labor. <sighs> You know, it's like, oh, the, the donkey comes in from the field plowing all day. She gives me an apple. That's all she's got to give me. I, I, she gives me an apple, and I'll go out and plow again the next day. It's, it's uh, yeah. I love it. That's funny. Well, our wives got to have us, you know, under control. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, I, 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 uh, uh, what, what, I relinquished control, right? That, that happened. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Here you go. Here. I just gave it up. Just yeah. gave it up. I'm fine. Did I'm we, fine with it. So did did we let's talk did we actually did we relinquish it or did they come in like a a a, a foreign dictator? <laughs> I don't know. Was there was it like a, did they storm the beach? <laughs> was there an air raid? Like did we totally. uh, was, what did we relinquish it or we were we theoretically held at gunpoint i don't know i mean you're right but because i know she's an earshot of this i'm gonna yeah. stop that, right yeah, you're gonna yeah you're, you're smart as soon as i step out of this room but 
what were you saying about me huh what were you saying yeah, about as soon as you turn off the record button yeah <laughs> it's like oh oh babe we were just kidding it was just uh uh yeah because here's the deal once you turn off the record button nobody can save you bro no man look my wife's from spain so she's got that oh yeah I mean, she's got the, and I do too. I mean, I'm half Latin myself, but yeah, it's not the same. It's, no, she's from Spain, and you got, you got the problem is, 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 is she's from Spain, and you got a little bit of St. Louis mixed into you. It's yeah, not the it's same. A, yeah, it's a, you know, it's not the same, bro. Not even close. Not even. Oh man, Aaron, this has been such an amazing. Um, oh, you bet, buddy. I've had such a blast. I I just can't tell you, um, you know, just talking to you. I really appreciate you just being open and honest and, and you know, talking about the real struggles that, you know, yeah. people are going through and people in your position are going through, man. So I, I really appreciate being open and honest and giving us some insight into, you know, how difficult this this is and the decisions you have to make and all of that, man. Yeah. And, you know, the, uh, to leave you on a positive note, the thing, one thing I've enjoyed is that I've been writing a lot of songs. And during all this craziness, I recorded a new album. And I, re I even sang all the vocals in, in my wife's closet. I, I have a nice mic. I set up everything in her closet. Apparently, all the clothes make for a good vocal booth. Yeah. And, uh, man, you know, we're going to put that album out. We, got a new, we just put out a new song from that album. It's called Whisper My Name. But that, the album will come out in January, and it's called American Soul. And, um, you know, so I've just... That's awesome. I've looked, I've looked at this as a time to, uh, you know, this downtime, I'm restocking the shelves. You oh. know, restocking the shelves. I like that. Restocking the shelves. I like how you put that. Yeah, getting ready. Getting ready. Once, once I get the green light again, you know what, the... the once they, they allow me to turn flip, turn on the open sign, man, the, the shelves are going to be stocked. That's awesome. So, would you keep after it too, brother? I'm trying, man. I'm trying here. I'm, I, I don't have to go on the road like you. You know, I, I get to stay in the comfort of my home uh, and record yeah. the podcast. Um, but, you know, I, I wish you all the best in your crew, your bandmates, everybody on the road. Uh, Thanks, brother. Yeah, man, I wish you guys all the best. And again, Aaron, this has been absolutely amazing. My best to your family. And Thanks, brother. Yeah. Likewise. And um, hey, when things get back to normal, uh, bring your wife and your brother out to see me at a show. We'll take good care of y'all. Oh, man, I would absolutely love that. That would be amazing. Would love to do that. That's awesome. So, thanks for the opportunity, brother. Thank you so much, Aaron. Well, good luck again on your show tonight, man, and, and Godspeed, brother. We'll talk soon. All right, you too. God bless you, brother. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>